Hi everyone, Sokol and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I wanted to talk about the books that don't seem to be uh, getting all that much attention on booktube. I know that it's very hard to resist the hype and it's very common to just pick up a book that a lot of people are talking about at the moment. I just feel like uh, a lot more people need to know about the books on my list and that's why we're doing this. The first book that I want to talk about is The Airy Breathe by Frances de Pontes Pebbles. It is incredible and more people need to know about this because it has so much potential to be a lot of people's favorites. Uh, it is going to be great for fans of Daisy Jones and the Six and obviously Evelyn Hugo because it is about a musical group in Brazil, about the highs and lows, about the rise to fame and therefore every single thing you need in this kind of story. This book is incredible. It follows these two girls that are from different social classes. They were raised on a sugar plantation and one of them was the orphan that worked there and the other was the daughter of the sugar plantation owner. They were the same age so they found solace in each other and became uh, very close friends and both of them really wanted to become stars. They wanted to be on the radio. Because they're both not happy with their circumstances, they run off to Rio de Janeiro to start from the bottom. And we follow their journey as they're becoming bigger and bigger in the entertainment business. First of all, what an incredibly fascinating setting. Second of all, the story is very, very compelling. Uh, third of all, the relationship between these two girls and then women is so complicated and toxic in many ways. When you're reading this, you definitely want to know what's going to happen to them next. The relationship goes through so many stages. It's very turbulent. They are the closest to each other, so only they can hurt each other the most. You root for them, but you understand that the dynamic that they have is incredibly unhealthy, so it just can't end well. If you like mockumentaries about musicians, uh, for example, you just watch Daisy Jones and you're looking for something similar, pick this book up, but remember that it is a historical fiction and in historical fiction, the pacing is a bit slower. Another book that I don't see a lot of people talking about is Pages for You by Celia Brown Ring. It was one of the books that I read very early into my booktube channel and I love this. This is a literary novel about a very naive uh, provincial a girl that goes to university in a big city and falls for her married female professor. What makes the story particularly interesting for me is when you read it as an adult, and it's an adult book, it's very clear how much the protagonist romantizes this experience. Uh, she is obsessed with this woman. She believes that this woman is her one and only, that they are soulmates. And you also see how, in contrast, this other party, this woman that she's in love with, doesn't care that much. She doesn't take this girl seriously. And for her, this relationship from the high of her experience, because she's older, is just a fling to get her mind off from the issues that she has at home with her husband. What Celia Browning does really well is she writes from the point of view of the student, but she still includes so many little deals for the reader to indicate that this relationship is not a romance, it's not romantic, and that the reader shouldn't perceive it like that. I love this book. I know that it's a bit more popular in the literally fiction circles, but overall, I don't see it much on booktube. My next pick could be perceived as controversial because the order is very much loved and people do read her books. But this book in particular doesn't get the love that it deserves, in my opinion. It's The Fledgling by Octavia Butler. So when people talk about Octavia Butler on booktube or honestly in real life, uh, they talk about Kindred or her series. 
but not this book. And I personally believe that this is such a cool story. I love the world building. I love the concept. It's very readable, very compelling, and it's about vampires the way we've never seen them before. So Fledgling is about a girl that wakes up after a blunt trauma to her head. She doesn't remember anything, she doesn't know who she is, and she's in the middle of the wilderness. She manages to get out of the forest and stop a car, uh, which is driven by a young man who helps her figure out who she is and what happened. I'm going to spoil you a bit, she is a vampire, it's very obvious from the first few passages in the book, but how she ended up there, why, who hurt her, you're going to figure out while you're reading the book. I'm going to warn you about one thing and one thing only, she looks very young, uh, the book points out uh, from other people's point of views that she looks about 14-15 and it's mentioned a few times, she's not. 14 or 15, she's much, much older, she's a vampire, but uh, she participates in some sexual acts, so it might feel uncomfortable knowing that she looks young. I don't know why it was that much important for Octavia E. Butler to mention that, but overall, I really, really enjoyed the story. I think it's brilliant. I think that for how short it is, the world building is top-notch. Another vampire story, The Quick by Lauren Owen, is such a good book if you love classical vampire tales. The story is about a pair of siblings, uh, the girl and a boy. Uh, they are pretty much abandoned from birth because their mother dies and their aristocratic father gives them to the care of constantly changing governesses. They are pretty much alone in the world and they are very close because of it. They get into all kinds of shenanigans until they grow up and separate because the brother decides to go get himself a fancy education. So he goes to Oxford. The sister continues to write him and expects him to get back after he finishes university, but he doesn't want to get back. He wants to pursue a career of a writer and he decides to rent a room with a very eccentric young man that he finds deeply fascinating. After a while, the friendship that he develops with his roommate becomes sexual and they don't really know what to do with it and if they actually can allow themselves to continue on. There's a few other point of views in the story and the one that I feel obligated to tell you about to make you curious about the book is of a scientist that becomes the human of a secret vampire club and starts figuring out what vampires can take, how they operate, their biology. Eventually, these two storylines cross paths and become one. I'm not going to tell you how and why, but the structure of this book is incredible and the world building that was done here is absolutely brilliant because we get so many different point of views from people in very different circumstances and they all are connected to the secret society. I love this. If you're looking for a phenomenal uh, gothic vampire story, pick this book up. It's so good. There's something completely different on my list that I listened to as an audiobook and that took me no time at all because of how fascinating the topic was is spent by Antonia Crane. It's a non-fiction story from an ex-sex worker. It's autobiographical and she tells the story of how she became a sex worker, uh, the types of jobs that she's ever done and some of the jobs surprised me because I didn't know they exist. The casual day-to-day -day things that were so normal for her and that I couldn't even imagine. She has a very compulsively readable writing voice and if the topic interests you, pick it up. It's definitely better than most celebrity memoirs that I've ever read. The same theme, different story. This one is fictional, Cam Girl by Elliot Wake. It's incredible. I still remember a lot of details from it, even though I've read it quite a bit ago. It's a thriller slash crime about a heroine who wants to be 
an artist, a visual artist, and she gets into a very serious uh, car accident, uh, which is her fault, and loses the ability to use her hand properly. So her dreams of becoming a visual artist have to be left behind. She's devastated and for a very long period doesn't know what to do with herself until she accidentally meets a guy who is in cam girl business and becomes a cam model. It's this one thing that she believes that she's going to be good at. A few years into her new profession, she uh, gets a very odd client that doesn't really want her to do anything sexual for him and that is very insisted on building a personal relationship with her. She doesn't really know who that person is and she's becoming more and more worried that she got herself uh, her first stalker. This is a deeply, deeply emotional and dark book and I didn't know what I'm getting myself into, but at the same time, it's so brilliant. I really, really love this. If you're looking for a devastating book, for a book that is going to surprise you, for a book that is going to hit you in the feels, this book is definitely a good contender. And the last book that I want to mention in this video is a book that I read fairly recently. It's The Girls I've Been by Tess Sharp. Now, this book is going to be under hyped for a very short amount of time because the rights uh, for an adaptation uh, were bought by Netflix the moment it came out. So uh, at some point, we hope uh, it's going to get a movie or a TV show. The story is very cool and it's much, much darker than I expected. Plus, if you are in a reading slump, pick it up because it's written in a very compact and very concise language. It's not very descriptive, it's full of dialogue, but it's still so, so good. It follows a teenage heroine who has a very difficult past. Her mom was a swindler and she used her daughter in her schemes without her really wanting to be a part of it, obviously. Because as a young woman with a small child, she was perceived as more trustworthy. When the protagonist became a bit older, her mother married an actual criminal. The protagonist knew that she's not going to survive this and that she doesn't want to live like this. And the only way to escape and make sure that she's never going to get caught is to actually put her parents in jail. So she plays a big part in them getting caught and continues on with her life until at the start of this novel she goes to a bank with her girlfriend and her ex-boyfriend and they become hostages in a bank robbery situation. The criminals that attack the bank don't expect anyone to be smart enough and savvy enough to put on a fight. Then there's the heron who actually experienced much worse and she knows how to deal with this type of people. A lot of trigger warnings for this book because the heron's past is horrible and when I say horrible I mean really really bad. There are scenes of sexual assault, sexual assault of minors, pedophilia, violence, very explicit violence. So if that's something you can stomach, this book is not for you, but I found the structure of this novel so well done the way the order kept the suspense till the very end was just phenomenal. It's really, really good uh, writing craft-wise and the story is very interesting. So these are all the books that I wanted to mention in this video. In the comments down below, tell me about the books that you love that booktube doesn't seem to catch on with because we need to discover more of these titles and on this note, thank you for watching this video, I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you soon with another one, but until then...